Sometimes I have to step out and do something different. Otherwise life would get pretty boring, wouldn't it? I love using chocolate as a garnish. It's so versatile, it sets fast, and it's ready to use almost instantly. But today, I'm stepping out. Hello and welcome, I'm Taryn. This channel is all about delicious food with a focus on presentation. I love making food fun and visually appealing. I hope you enjoy the tips on this channel and can benefit from them yourself. Today we're exploring sweet twill biscuits for garnishing desserts. Have you ever made these delicate little wafers before? They're almost as versatile as chocolate. In a restaurant kitchen, a dessert typically consists of the main component, a sauce, a crunch, and a garnish. And twill biscuits are perfect to fulfill the crunch requirement. And they're surprisingly easy to make. Well, these twill biscuits aren't going to make themselves, so let's get into it. These are the things we need. Flour, icing sugar, egg white, and melted butter. All we need to do is put all of these into a bowl and whisk them together to form a paste. We're not trying to aerate it with the whisk, we're just trying to mix it all together so that there are no flour bubbles remaining. This is a basic recipe for twill paste, but you can add nuts, spices and essences to get different flavours and textures if you want to get more creative. We can't use this straight away because it'll be too runny, so we need to put it into the fridge to firm up a little. The bonus to this is that it'll keep for about a week, so you can have it made and just take it out to use when you need to. Teal cookies can be made into almost any shape. They're usually baked flat and shaped while they're still warm and pliable. You can use templates to make uniform shapes. This makes life so much easier, whether you're making one or two, or a whole lot. So while our paste is chilling out in the fridge, I'm going to make a few templates. I've got some cardboard here. You don't want something too thick. You want something about the thickness of a breakfast cereal box. The first template is a thickish rectangle. We can make a tunnel shaped twill biscuit from this one. These next ones are a couple of thin rectangles. They're good for making little twill curls. This one we can roll around a rolling pin to create a cylinder shape. It's got a lovely decorative point on one side. This one is a long triangular shape, which we can bend slightly before it cools to create height on our dessert. Here I've got a baking tray and a silicon baking mat. These are perfect for making twills on. Let's try out our templates with our paste. The cardboard template helps us to get a really even thickness, and a small stepped palette knife or spatula is the perfect tool for spreading on the paste. I'll make a couple of each of our shapes. If you don't have a silicon baking mat, you could use baking paper. You might have to get creative with something to hold it down for you while you're spreading the paste on though. Don't go baking too many of these at once. You only have a few minutes once they're out of the oven to work with them. You wouldn't want a whole tray crisping up before you get a chance to shape them. So only bake two or three per tray. Pop them into the oven and watch them carefully. They don't take long and we don't want burnt cookies. These are just out of the oven and are nicely browned. I'm going to carefully curve the twill biscuit around this bottle to mould it into the tunnel shape we're wanting. Hold it in shape for a few seconds to keep it snug around the bottle. They don't take long to crisp up and set into their shape. Look at these tunnel shaped twills. They'll make any dessert look spectacular. Later in this video, we'll plate up some desserts to show you some ideas of how these can be used. This is the template for our cylindrical twill. The decorative point adds a nice bit of height to the finished biscuit. Since twills are very thin, delicate cookies, they have a tendency to break easily, so make sure you've made a few extras as backups. I'll shape this around a rolling pin. A great tip here is to keep it near the edge. 
This makes taking it off a lot easier and it's less likely to break. Here's the triangular shape template. You could make very intricate twills using very detailed templates. I'll pop these triangles onto the side of my cake tin to give them a slight curve. Next I'll make the thinner rectangles and carefully roll them around this wooden spoon handle. You can form twills into different shapes while they're still hot. They set very quickly once they're out of the oven. If they do start to set before you've had a chance to shape them, you can pop them back into the oven for a few seconds. This should soften them slightly and give you a second chance. You don't have to use templates, you can also make them freehand using a flat bladed knife or a stepped spatula. Let's make a few of these now. I'm going to make a big freehand circle that we can turn into a basket. I'm trying to keep the paste fairly even so that it bakes evenly. If there are some thin bits and some thick bits it's going to make baking them very tricky. If you're not confident spreading them freehand, make a template. This will guarantee they're all the same and give the same thickness. I'll carefully pick these up and drape them over a shot glass and sort of hold them there to keep the shape. The overall size of your basket will depend on the object you choose to shape it over. So if you want a wider base, choose something like a ramekin. They actually take the shape quite quickly once they're out of the oven. The other way you can make twirls is to spread a sheet of paste onto the baking mat. This way you can use cookie cutters to create shapes part way through the baking process. This is called power baking. I'll show you the classic arc shaped twirl and also my signature twirl I made in my final exam many years ago. Spread a slab of twill paste as evenly and thin as you can onto your mat. Pop it into the oven and pull it out when it's just dry looking but not golden. Now we can use these circle cutters to cut out our shapes. Did you know twill comes from the French word tile? It's named after the arc shape of roof tiles that this cookie most often resembles. Now we can put them back in the oven for the last few minutes of baking time. I'll pop the smaller circles straight onto the rolling pin to create the arc shape and the circular design I'll just leave on the tray for a few minutes to crisp flat. Here's the classic arc shaped wheels. And here's our cool circular design. Wow, look at the selection of twills we've created. Aren't they amazing little cookies? Let's plate up some desserts so you can see how twills can take your desserts to the next level. I've got a little chocolate tart here, which I've cut into a circular shape with a cookie cutter. You can't keep me completely away from chocolate. Here's the thicker rectangle twill that we've shaped into a tunnel. I've also got some whipped chantilly cream. Chantilly cream is just whipped cream with a little bit of icing sugar to sweeten it and a hint of vanilla essence for flavouring. I've also got some chocolate sauce and of course a mint tip to finish it off. So we've covered our dessert requirements. A main component, a sauce, a crunch and a garnish. I've chosen to use this triangular white plate to contrast with the dark chocolate sauce and chocolate tart. A strip of chocolate sauce would look great brushed onto the plate with a pastry brush. A line will be a nice contrast to the circular shapes of the dessert and twill. Next I'll put our chocolate tart right here in the centre. I'm going to put a little cream quenelle on top of the tart. Running your spoon briefly under some warm water will help create a beautiful quenelle. I'm going to put it parallel to the brushed chocolate, which will keep the dessert balanced. Now we can add our twill over the top, gently putting it in position so we don't break it. And lastly, our mint tip to finish it off. Wow, I think I'd be pretty happy to be served a dessert like this. For our second dessert, I've got the same chocolate tart, but this time cut into a rectangle shape. We'll use some cream and a mint tip again. I'm going to use this slightly curved triangular twill. And for something a little bit different, a raspberry puree and a couple of whole berries. 
I've chosen to use this plate. It's white again, otherwise our dark dessert and puree would just blend in. I'm going to put a blob of raspberry puree onto the plate and scrape the back of a spoon through it. Next I'll put the chocolate tart parallel to the puree. Then I'll pipe a little cream on top. And I'm going to add a little dot of cream to hold our twill in place. And a few berries on top to tie in the sauce with the garnish. Now we can add our twill, curving up and over our dessert. And lastly, our mint tip to finish it off. So simple, yet so effective, isn't it? For our next dessert, I've got a vanilla bean bavoir. It's in this little mould at the moment. I'm going to use this circular twill. Here's some mixed berry compote, some cream, and a mint tip to garnish. This time we'll use a white circular bowl to keep the berry compote contained. I'll unmold the bavoise straight into the middle of the bowl. A bavoise is a cold set dessert similar to a mousse. Let me know in the comments if you're keen to see how to make these. I've surrounded the bavoise with the compote. A bit of piped cream on top creates some height and helps to support the twill. To finish it off, we'll add our green mint tip. Well, what do you think? Let me know in the comments if this has inspired you to start using twills on your desserts. I'll show you another way to plate up our vanilla bean bavoir, this time using our cylindrical twill. We'll also add some ice cream to this one. Here's some cream, a mint tip and our berry coulis. We'll use this white plate again and start with a generous zigzag of coulis on the plate. Then pop the bavoir in the centre. We can create height to enhance this dessert by putting our twill on top. I think it'll look great to fill the twill centre with piped cream. I'm also going to add a little dot of cream here to the side of the bavoir. This will act as a base for our ball of ice cream to sit on. If you're serving a few plates, it really helps the presentation side of things as the ice cream doesn't start melting all over the plate too quickly. The other option is to pre-boil your ice cream and refreeze it. Then all you need to do is pick one up and pop it onto the cream dot. If you'd like to see how to pre-boil ice cream in more detail, have a look at my Sunday Buffet video. I'll leave a link in the description below. Here's another great dessert using a twill cookie. As you can see, twills are commonly added to desserts as garnishes, but you can also use them as edible baskets. You can fill them with things like ice cream, cream, mousse or pastry cream. Make sure you fill them just before serving to avoid the delicate twills softening from the moist filling. For our last dessert today, we've got our little twill basket and curl. Then we've got some chocolate sauce, a little bit of icing sugar and of course our mint tip to garnish. I'll also be using some ice cream which is still in the freezer. I'll put the basket onto a dark plate this time. It's our pale coloured basket that'll be sitting right on the plate so there'll be contrast between the two. If you want to be sure it's not going to slide off the plate, you can add a little dot of cream underneath to glue it in place. I'm just going to pop one of our pre-balled balls of ice cream into the basket. We can't have an ice cream sundae without chocolate sauce over the top. A little bit of icing sugar dusted over for looks and a twill curl and mint tip to finish it off. Isn't that a great way to serve ice cream in its own edible bowl? We've hardly touched the surface of what you're able to do with twill paste but I'm sure if you can get the basics right, you'll be able to experiment and come up with all sorts of creative ideas. After having a play around with them, I'm sure I'm going to be using them a lot more myself. Plating desserts is so much fun. If you're looking for more tips and ideas, make sure you check out my video on chocolate brownie or there's a playlist ready to go down here. Happy twirling.